In California, it wasn't as bad or as blatant or as hurting towards you as a person because people respected you a lot more for being an Indian. Now, when I came to South Dakota to go to boarding school, I was still fairly coming from that California attitude of, of liking Indians, of respecting them, and then when my mother took us to Winter, South Dakota, which is a border town on the Rosebud Reservation, we were going to go to Episcopal Christian boarding school. And so she was taking us to this town to get our clothing supplies, our toothpaste, things that we would need in school. And we're standing there, and she has the money in her hand, and we're in a pennies department store. And these whole line of white farmers and ranchers that live around that area. She was in line, but this woman kept only helping the white people. And they'd step in front of my mom, and she wouldn't say nothing. And I wasn't paying attention to all of a sudden, I'd see my mom just kind of get a look that mothers have. And she told that white lady at the cashier that my money is as good as any of these people, and you're not going to treat me like that because I don't accept that kind of treatment. And from that time on, I think I got empowered with her spirit to say, I'm not going to let that happen to me, or if my mother could stand up, certainly I should be able to stand up. Mm -hmm. And so that's the first time I experienced the other side of the stereotype or racism of treatment was there in that store that, man, these white people are really mean, you know, over this way. And uh, I think through athletics, I was able to live with it more because it seemed like on the athletic field, there's more of acceptance based on your ability and not based on stereotype, image, or racism. And so uh, even though many towns uh, where we'd go play and we had some good teams in high school and all sports and so we'd hear things like red skin, you know, go back to the reservation, uh, prairie niggers, 